Is Neo stock set to soar in the coming weeks? Since releasing their earnings on Thursday, the stock has jumped up over 20%, but this might be just the beginning, as there is still a number of key catalysts still to come in this month. JP Morgan have just raised their price target by over 50% and are now expecting a huge financial and operational turnaround. This is a must-watch video for NEO investors where I look at the very latest NEO news, analyze the new financials and explore the reasons behind analysts starting to become bullish on NEO. And I'll give my opinion on what's going to happen in the coming weeks. If you're a NEO investor, then you need to watch this. But before we get into the video, if you find any value in this, can I ask you to smash the like button? It literally costs nothing, but it helps me out so much. I'm aiming to get 500 likes on this video. Help me hit that goal. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any new content like this. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice, so always do your own due diligence. After watching this video, let me know your thoughts about NEO in the comments below or let me know if there's something important that I have missed. Now let's get straight into it. So first things first, NEO released their second quarter earnings results on Thursday and as I had expected, they announced a few huge developments. Just two weeks ago, I made this video talking about two huge catalysts that were upcoming for NEO. The first of this, the first was this earnings report, and I was not disappointed. In fact, NEO actually did a little better than I expected, but this does not tell the whole story. NEO's delivery and margins are finally recovering, so let's look at the numbers. Vehicle deliveries up 144% to 57,373 units. The vehicle margins 12.2% versus 6.2% a year ago and 9.2% in the first quarter. Revenue up 99% to $2.4 billion. Gross profit was $232 million in Q2, representing an increase of 1,840% from the second quarter of 23 and an increase of 246% from the first quarter of 24. Now, this is an incredible increase in profits. Although it's only the gross profit, even the most bearish people looking at this have to be impressed by the progress that has been made. What this means is that sales have gone up so much, but the cost of sales have not risen anywhere near as much. In other words, for the first time in a long time, we are starting to see NEO become more efficient. Then we have the gross profit margin of 9.7% versus 1% a year ago and 4.9% in Q1. Again, this is a result of those improvements. The net loss is down 16.7% to $694 million. And finally, cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash, short-term investments, and long-term deposits were $5.6 billion as of June 30th. So this is all very healthy. Now, one of the biggest reasons why NEO stock slumped in recent months was due, to the, was due to its drop in deliveries and margins. However, lower production was largely to blame as, as NEO was upgrading its models to its next-generation platform. With the upgrades completed in April, I had expected NEO deliveries to rebound strong, and that's exactly what had happened. In fact, NEO delivered a record number of EVs in Q2. And not only that, they cornered more than 40% of China's battery EV market, priced above 300,000 won during the quarter. Now, this is an incredible figure, because when people usually talk about the EV brands that are dominating the market, they never talk about NEO. Usually we hear about Tesla or BYD. These are the two companies leading the way in the EV space on a global level as well as in China. Then we hear about Li Auto or maybe Xpeng in China being the next big brands. But the majority of these sales are catering to a market that NEO does not serve until now. And I'll talk a bit about this in a moment, but I just want to take a look at NEO's actual financial statements first. Looking at the balance sheet, we can see that NEO has total assets of 13.8 billion and total liabilities of 10.9 billion. Now, assets and liabilities have both dropped since December 23, but the asset to liability ratio remains quite similar. Overall, this is a very strong balance sheet. Looking at the income statement very quickly, we can see total revenue of 2.4 billion, the gross profit of 232 million and the net loss of 694 million. And these are the figures that we spoke about a moment ago. Now, although NEO is still loss making, the losses have substantially decreased from last year. And as the company keeps improving and delivering on their targets, this is going to keep getting better, which is probably the reason why analysts are now beginning to change their minds about NEO. 
Before I look at the analysts' opinions on NEO, I do have one more catalyst to look at that is taking place in the next few weeks, so keep watching until the end. Looking at MarketBeat, we can see that NEO's trading volume has gone through the roof in recent days, with volume of over 85 million shares versus the average volume of 51. The consensus price target for NEO is 694, with a low forecast of 4 and a high forecast of 16. And the latest price targets have been set this week. Citigroup still rate NEO as a buy, but have lowered their price target to $7. While on Friday, JP Morgan have increased their price target from $5.30 up to $8. And in my opinion, this $8 price target is significant. Now, looking at the charts, my analysis has not changed since my last video two weeks ago. If we look here, it's the same chart, same lines, same process. Exactly what I was expecting to happen there has now happened here. And in this video, I spoke about the last time we've seen this being back in April. We are now beginning to see the same sort of movement happen again. Just as I had predicted two weeks ago, the first major catalyst was the earnings report, and this has provided the breakout move. Now, the first test for NEO is to stay above $4.80 next week, and then the stock can continue upwards again. Having broke this resistance level for the first time since April, I feel the stock can retest $6 again within the next couple of weeks. Now, as I said a few moments ago, there is still a major catalyst coming for NEO before the end of the month, and this is the launch of the Envo L60. The new subbrand is launching in less than two weeks' time, and this will have a major impact on NEO. NEO aims to deliver 220,000 cars in 2024, including 20,000 for Envo. NEO's co founder and president said the EV maker is aiming to deliver 220 vehicles in 2024 the first time the company's management has publicly mentioned an overall delivery target. Now, looking at this chart, NEO delivered 20,176 vehicles in August, meaning it's the fourth consecutive month of deliveries above the 20,000 mark, and year-to-date, NEO deliveries stood at more than 128,000, up 35% year-on-year. For the main NEO brand, which is targeting the premium segment, the 200,000 unit, Whole year delivery target means that the target will be met if deliveries average about 18,000 units per month for the remaining four months of this year. NEO guided for third quarter deliveries of between 61 and 63,000 units, representing year over year growth of about 10%. NEO hopes the Envo L60 will reach 20,000 units delivered in a single month sometime in 2025 where the long-term goals for the main brand are 40,000 sales per month and a 25% gross margin. Now, this gross margin is what is a big deal for NEO. Right now, NEO's gross margin is the best it's ever been, and it's only 12%. But NEO is not only planning to more than double its sales to 40,000 per month, which is 480,000 per year, but they're aiming for 25% gross margin on that. So looking back here at their financial statements, let's do some quick maths. Q2 deliveries were 57,000. This produced 2.4 billion in revenue and 232 million in gross profit. If NEO was to achieve 480,000 deliveries next year, that would be roughly $20 billion in revenue for the year and a gross margin of 25% would be a gross profit of $5 billion for 2025. Now, without even trying to calculate and adding in operating expenses, I can guarantee that this would be moving NEO very close to turning those quarterly losses into finally becoming profitable. Let me know your thoughts on this. Drop a comment below. Are you bullish on NEO stock or do you think that it will crash down again? There's a lot of talk about NEO this week, but always do your own due diligence. Remember that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Always do that research. But if you enjoyed this analysis, then please like and subscribe. I hope you make a load of money on this stock. Follow me on Twitter and I'll catch you in the next video.